Like I said before, there's no need to kneel if you are uncomfortable kneeling. Just make sure you have a comfortable chair. Remember, one of the things that we work on in meditation, in addition to our breathing, is our posture. So you want to sit in a chair that you can actually have good posture. No recliners, no couch. So something that you can sit nice and tall on and really work on that posture. So when it comes time for us to sit, we'll review the posture because I know that some of you are brand new to meditation tonight. So we'll make sure that everybody has the right sitting position before we sit for kind of a long time. Okay. All right, so let's get started. So I'm going to face the front shaman and now. And I invite you to kneel down with me so we can bow in together. And Moksa, close your eyes. Moksa, Yame. I hear on face, showman, and bow. Us. And let's bow to each other, please. Us. I do. And stand, please. Good. And relax your mind, relax your body. Make sure you have enough room. To twist at the waist and let those arms really relax. This is a great time to start really thinking about your breathing, paying attention to your breathing. Make sure you're breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth nicely. Control, nice and slow and deep breath always. And keep loosening up. start with the hands in front. So nice and slowly, you're going to take a nice deep breath in through your nose at the same time. Bring those arms up over your head. So inhale, nice big breath up. Focus all your energy at the top. And then exhale, release the breath, bring those arms down, but not all the way down. Gather all that energy out from in front of you. And now inhale again, pull all of that energy to your hara, your center, that's the center of your body. And exhale, release nice and slowly and hands down to your sides. You're gonna do exactly that again, hands together. Knee, nice deep breath in. I focus the energy and exhale, release. Gather that energy back in in front of you. Right? And then inhale, pull to your hara. And exhale, release and relax the arms down. And one last time, hands together. Right? Inhale, nice and strong. Right? Exhale, release. And move to the front. So now's the time for you to get settled into your comfortable sitting position. So while you're doing that, I'll go over and make sure that everybody understands uh, the posture that we want to sit in. So like I said, breathing is the number one thing we're thinking about in meditation, but posture is a pretty close second to keeping our, our body aligned. That helps us breathe better, which is why we, we think about that. So whether you're sitting in a chair or you're kneeling on the floor or you're, you're doing something else, one of the things that's helpful to keep in mind is to keep your ears centered over your shoulders and your shoulders centered over your hips. So when we sit, we don't want to slump forward, we don't want to come backwards, we want a nice straight line so that the ears and the shoulders and the hips are all in a nice straight line. Also important to keep the chin kind of tucked in. We don't want to tip the head this way or down this way. We want to try to keep the, the spine nice and tall and we do that by keeping the chin in. The other thing we're going to focus on is the position of our hands. So uh, my camera is a little bit backwards, so it might look a little bit strange to you, but the right hand is going to go on the bottom, palm up, left hand on top, and the thumbs are going to touch lightly. And once you're sitting down, you're just going to rest those hands in your lap. So all together, you have this posture of a nice straight line coming down from the ears down to the hips, and the hands on top of each other sitting on your lap, thumbs nice and lightly touching. You're going to focus on your breath. 
So counting in each time you inhale, nice and slow, and then exhale, nice and slow. Some people like to count every breath. Some people like to count as they inhale. They think one, two, three, four on the way in, and then maybe one, two, three, four on the way out. However you'd like to count your breath is fine, or if you don't want to count, that's fine too. Just make sure it's a nice, slow, controlled breath. Your eyes, we're gonna to try to keep our eyes maybe half closed so that we're not fully open and distracted by things that are going on around us, but we're also not closed so that we don't get too sleepy while we sit. So maybe half closed, sit, keep that nice, strong posture, good, slow breath, and we'll spend some time breathing together.
servant while you're still seated, please bring your hands together in gashos, palms together, pull them right out in front of your face. Still in a nice strong posture, nice deep breathing. So now everyone with your eyes fully open and reaching both hands out in front of you. So stretch your arms out in front. So now we're going to go back to our breathing, but in a different way. So what we're going to do is take a nice deep breath in through the nose. And at the same time, we're going to pull our hands back, palms up next to our chest, almost like we're getting ready to chamber to strike with a new heat day. So nice deep breath in through the nose, nice and slowly. Bring those hands back. And exhale, turn the palms over and push down slowly towards your lap. Reach out again, the same way. Knee, in, nice deep breath. And exhale, push down slowly. And good, one last time. where we would do walking meditation, but since we're not together and uh, some of us may not have a lot of room to walk, we're going to do a little standing meditation to kind of uh, finish our session before we, we talk a little bit more. So I'm going to try to stand back here so you can see a little bit of what's going on and move my bench out of the way. So it's very similar to how we start uh, class. We're going to put our hands together, we're going to take a nice deep breath, bring the hands up but just a little bit different when we, when we uh, get to the next part. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take your right foot and you're gonna step forward. For those of you who are senior students and you know kuzure uh, eko dachi, that's what we're ending up in. So it's almost like sanjin dachi, where one foot ends up in front of the other one a little bit, except your toes are pointed front. In sanjin dachi, we put the toes in. In Kuzure Eko Dachi, we point the toes ahead. So it's a parallel stance, but it's a staggered parallel stance. So let's take our hands together. We're gonna to take that nice deep breath in the same way we did in the beginning. So breathe in nice and deep through your nose all the way up. Same focus like we did in the beginning. But then instead of coming down, what I want you to do is step forward into that stance. Release your hands and bring them straight down in front of you like you're trying to hold up a wall or push somebody away from you. And you're going to stop your hands right here at the level of your shoulders. And I want you to try to hold on to that posture. It's not an easy position to hold on to. Sometimes the arms get a little tired. Try to keep your shoulders strong. Try to keep your posture. 
posture nice and aligned. And again, you're slowly inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Control the breathing. One more nice big breath here. And exhale. Good, hands together the same way. This time your left foot is gonna take a step forward into Kazure Ekodachi. Then nice deep breath, same way hands come up. Good focus at the top, but when you release, bring the palms down in front like you're pushing away. And hold strong at your shoulders. And breathe deeply. down in front. This time we're going to pull our left foot backwards. We're going to end up in parallel stance right where we started. Then last one, a nice deep breath up. Okay, focus here. Then release, come down in front. And four. Keep that posture, keep that nice, slow, deep breath. Good, shake those arms out, shake the everything out. I would invite you to come and sit closer, but we can't really do that tonight. So I'm actually gonna move a little bit closer to the camera and uh, we'll have our sort of usual discussion. I brought a friend this evening. I thought he might be a good guest for us to have in our uh, meditation class tonight. So I'm going to bring the camera just a little bit closer so we have a little bit more light. And we can have a little better view of our, our friend. <clears throat> so most of you have probably um, heard the story of this guy before. Maybe some of you haven't, um, but certainly all of you probably watch him as he hangs out on the Shinzen downstairs. Um, and his name is Dharma, and we keep him around for a lot of reasons, um, but uh, mostly because of one of the most famous uh, phrases that's associated with him. Uh, in Japanese, they say, Nana karobi ya oki. And what that means is, if you fall down seven times, you get up eight times. And um, Dharma is, has kind of become uh, the symbol of perseverance, of a person who never gets up, gives up, a person who always keeps trying even when things are difficult. And Dharma has a very special um, talent. He can have a little bit of difficulty, but he works his way back up to sitting again. He even almost faces front. He's pretty good at that. Um, so in, in looking at um, you know, all the different ways where we need to have perseverance, where we need to keep trying, um, all of us have a lot of things in our lives that, that require us to um, really focus and put all of our attention to the task in front of us. And sometimes the task in front of us is very difficult. Sometimes it's just uncomfortable. Sometimes it's just kind of different and maybe it's not something that we've ever experienced before um, and we're not really sure how to proceed. So um, 
sometimes the best thing we can do is keep trying. Now, sometimes we can't do it alone, and maybe we need to ask for some help, and maybe we need to go and look for some information to, to be uh, on a better path. Um, but one of the most important things I think that we can do is, is always keep trying and always try to learn more about what we can do. Um, there are definitely situations that, that we face where sometimes there's literally nothing that can be done. Um, tonight, um, I, I can't do much about the fact that, that we have to be separated right now. Um, tomorrow it's supposed to rain a little bit, and I don't think there's anything that I can do about that either. Um, so there are some situations where we, we can't do much about what's in front of us. But if, um, if it is a situation where we can make a change or we can try to make things different, um, sometimes we feel like, oh, I must be out of options and I don't know what to do now. Um, but Dharma is kind of here to remind us that uh, there may be a different way. And maybe if we just keep our focus and our attention and our good, strong energy on something, that we'll be able to find a different solution, we'll be able to find a different way to tackle whatever problem is in front of us. Um, you noticed when, when Dharma kind of like fell to the side, like sometimes you just sort of lean him over and he just, he can't get up at all. Because um, things are sometimes difficult and maybe it would take him extra time or maybe like now it took him with my help. He needed a little bit of help to do that. Um, it's not always a smooth path when we have to face difficult circumstances and persevere. Um, but I think that that's one of the things that our karate training really brings to us is this idea that we can do a lot about a lot of things. And I, I use this one a lot when we talk in meditation class. Um, when you did your first push-up on your seiken, you probably didn't think it was very easy. In fact, you might have been one of those people who said, I'm never gonna be able to do this. I, I just can't possibly do this. Um, it still might not be your favorite thing, but I bet it's a lot better than the very first day you did it. And the other part of that that's important to remember is it wouldn't have gotten better if you had given up. It wouldn't have gotten better if you hadn't kept trying. So even when things are difficult, even when it feels like, oh, this is never gonna be good, this is never gonna be uh, what I want it to be, or this is never, this is not easy, I don't wanna do this. Sometimes when we, we really focus our energy and, and we keep trying, um, things definitely get better. Uh, sometimes we don't even notice it. Um, they just get better little at a time, and then before you know it, it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, so the next time you're in class, or you see this guy uh, coming at you through the video screen, you can remember uh, what he stands for. He stands for not giving up and perseverance and trying hard and always giving things your best and remembering that you don't always have to do things alone. You can always ask for help and you can always find more information, um, but we keep trying. We do as much as we can uh, to keep trying. So that's the end of what I wanted to say about Dharma tonight. Um, what I do want to do is uh, usually we have a chance for people to share um, if they have a question or they have a thought that goes along with the lecture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay here and if you have a thought or a question that, uh, that you'd like to ask or something that you'd like to add to what I said, I really encourage you to type it into the comments because I can see those comments and I'll be happy to, um, anybody else who's watching can see your comment, but we can also, um, we can also chat a little bit because uh, we still have a few more minutes in our connection. So if anybody has anything they'd like to add, please feel free to do that. I really am here, I promise. I have to put my, my old lady glasses on so I can read your questions. I know sometimes it's hard to share in this format and some of us uh, don't type or text as well as others and uh, that's okay too, but I'm, I'm a very patient person. <laughs> I can wait to see if anybody has anything to say. So we'll just hang out for a few minutes. Oh, AJ, that's a great question. So uh, Dharma, we actually bought at a Japanese store in New York City. 
So you can actually, when you find a, a Japanese store, um, you can find them online, of course, now too, um, but they sell him in lots of different sizes. They all kind of have the same shape and they all kind of have the wobbliness about them. So this is the biggest one that we have at the dojo. Um, we also, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but downstairs we have another one that's kind of medium sized. He kind of stands about this tall next to, next to his bigger buddy. And uh, I've got one on my desk in the back that's really super small um, that I like to be able to see and, and just kind of remind me to, to focus my energy some days. So um, he's, he's pretty widely available in different places. Oh, thank you, Gustavo and Sebastian. I'm glad you enjoyed participating in meditation. I hope you can join us again. Uh, Sammy, uh, Dharma is actually his name. Um, technically, the Japanese call him Dharma Daishi, and he was the first monk to actually bring Buddhism from India into Japan. So he is a real figure. There's a lot of legend around him, so it's very difficult to find out what uh, his real history was. But he was a pretty important guy in spreading uh, Buddhism throughout Asia. Um, and just to be clear to everybody, we don't have him here because uh, we are Buddhist in the dojo. He just symbolizes a lot of really great things. So um, there are lots of uh, each each culture kind of calls him by a different name, but the Japanese call him Daruma Daishi. Thank you, Senpai Amelia. We're trying to stay together. Yes, Manny, I think that's really important uh, to remember that it's not always on our own. Like you can, you can sort of get the wrong idea from Dharma because he is kind of self-contained um, and uh, it looks like he solves all his own problems, but that's not always necessarily the case. It's not always uh, possible to do that. So reaching out and, and asking for help and finding more information is, um, is pretty important sometimes. Oh, Nick, that's a great phrase. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the uh, comment of his, it says, just because I can't do it today doesn't mean I can't do it tomorrow. And that's so true. Um, and I, I think that it is just really, um, really important, obviously, that we keep trying because we never know when that day is that things are going to click and we can suddenly do it. Uh, but I am certain that if we stop, we're never going to get to that day. Oh, Manny, that's a fantastic question. Uh, how to begin becoming, becoming humble enough to recognize when we need help. Um, I, uh, if I ever figure that out, I will let you know. Um, to me, that is a, a lifelong journey and uh, it, it's definitely one of these moments that I rock and wobble on a lot. Um, I, I think that I think that many of us probably have that same way of thinking. I know that I do, that I would prefer to solve my own problems. I would, I, I would really rather have all the answers. I'd really rather figure everything out. I don't need any help, thank you very much. Um, so sometimes it is very humbling to have to say, I'm not really sure what to do and I need to ask somebody else. Um, I think, first of all, um, just um, trying to put yourself in a position where you're willing to do that is important and maybe starting with some smaller things um, and you know I mean there are very literal things like there are some objects that are just simply too heavy for me to lift and no matter how much I try I can't lift I'm gonna have to ask somebody to help me move something that's very heavy um, that's not the same as having a, an inside problem that I need some help with so it can feel a little bit more intimidating to ask somebody for help with something that's more of, of an inside thing. But I, I need to remember that, you know, if I, if I can't move a really big piece of furniture, I have no choice but to ask for help. And if I've tried everything I can on my inside problem and nothing's changing and nothing's getting better, it's probably time to ask for help. And then I think maybe humility comes when we say, boy, I don't have to wait until I've tried 
forever and ever and ever on my own. I don't have to wait until I'm desperate. I don't have to wait until I'm so frustrated. Um, maybe I can learn to ask for help earlier in the process um, and see if I can make my own life easier by getting someone else to help me. So like I said, I'll let you know once I have that figured out because that hasn't happened yet. Anybody else have anything that they want to add this evening? Oh, Senpai, Amelia, I, I agree that it's, you know, when sometimes we just have to face facts that, gee, I don't even know where to start with this. I really do need help. and. Um, and I think the more we get in the habit of knowing our own limitations and knowing um, that that you know it's okay to ask others, it's gonna gonna become easier. Ah, yes, Sammy, you have a lot of a lot of new information coming your way, I'm sure, and uh, that's that's always a a time where we all sort of bump up into our own limitations and wrestle with them a little bit. So um, grad school is a wonderful time to figure out how to uh, ask for help and when. Anybody else? We've got about one more minute to go here. Oh, Julian, that's a, a really good point. I think, I think you, you could be right there that, that um, people have a lot of capability of doing things, but sometimes they just, they don't. Maybe, maybe they, for whatever reason, the circumstance means that they can't really tap into their courage. They can't really muster up the energy to do what they need to do for one reason or another. Or sometimes they're worried about what somebody might think about them or or how they're doing something so I I think it's almost like you have to have courage to use your courage I think that's really important and that's a, a big a big piece of persevering and a big piece I think also of asking for help because I think sometimes it takes some courage to ask for help and that's important to do so that's a that was a great observation you had Okay, so I think we will close our session tonight. Normally we would stand and bow to each other, but how about we just do a quick os? And I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Um, it, uh, it, it's so wonderful to connect with all of you. Um, and uh, we hope that you'll, um, you'll keep Keep the ideas that we talked about tonight in mind, the perseverance, and most especially breathing. We could all use a little breathing uh, and a little calm, uh, uh, especially as this week starts. So um, I hope you enjoyed class, and uh, we will look forward to seeing you next time. Stay tuned for our next, uh, not only meditation class, but we have a lot of other classes coming up this week too, so I hope to see you somewhere. Oh,